Hi, my name is Casey Browning and I'm the owner here at Retro Active Arcade. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the old version of the game Quadruple X family game board. Um, so that means it could be like 1,038 games all the way up to 3,016 type games. Um, these boards, I will say right off the hop, is that they are now obsolete. As of about, I would say about two years ago, uh, they went on hi hiatus for about six to eight months and then now they've been coming out with some new boards. Um, even though it's the same game list, they're coming out with different things, like now they're SSD versus IDE. Uh, it's a different type of uh, processor, which is still Intel, but it's just newer based, that type of a thing. So what I wanted to talk about today was troubleshooting the existing board that you have. Um, it being obsolete, this might help you quite a bit, uh, or it might just give you the bad news that you didn't want to hear. Um, basically, there's only a few things that can go wrong with these boards, um, and when they do, you can fix them sometimes, and sometimes they're just toast. Um, sometimes they just need the replacement parts, but since they're obsolete, they're really, really hard to find. We have a few left. You can contact us if you want to see what we have. Uh, see if we'll be able to help you, but by the time you might figure that out, we might be out of it so far because I only have like four or five. It's not like a big big inventory of this kind of stuff. So basically what you want to do is make sure that everything's connected properly. So you want to make sure that you have a, there's a separate harness. If it's been working properly for years and stuff like that, you could ignore this and fast forward through the video a little bit, but uh, I'm just going to go over all the ports and how they should be connected and uh, we'll go from there. So there's a little five kind of prong Molex connector. This is for your buttons number five and six for player one and two only. Um, player four obviously doesn't have button five and six, so you don't need it, but uh, the JAMA harness itself has some of those wires, but they just, they're basically uh, dead. They don't work that way, so you have to connect this. So if you're having an issue with your player number five and six button, it's because you need to have this connected to it. Um, once these wires are connected to it, the regular daisy chain of uh, ground wires can, um, they can work fine throughout that whole thing. They don't need a separate ground that's on this harness. You can use it if you'd like, but you don't need to. You can just use the regular ground. Um, this is your satellite board. Uh, it should be connected by a long ribbon cable, IDE ribbon cable from the at top JAMA board to this board. Uh, this board has all your functions on it. It tells you, you know, your video, get into your main menu, volume up and down, that kind of a thing. Um, that's basically what you need to control everything. And the fingerboard on the bottom allows you to connect another JAMA for your third and fourth player. Um, <clears throat> that is the old style and the old way of doing it. If you want to see the new boards and the new way they're set up, you can check out uh, my other videos for JAMA boards and the 3016 and 20. 2019s. This one here, to make sure everything is good to go, you want to check your dip switches. So this is switch number one, so in your manual it'll say SW1, this one will say SW2. This SW1 is the only one that you're really going to mess with. This one's just for credits, so if you like press credit, it'll give you like one credit, two credit, four credit per press, that type of a thing. This one here, I always select number one to be on. The reason being is it allows you to add credits to the game when you're in the game, not in the main menu. When it's off, it'll just add the credits in the main menu. There's also a switch number four on here. When you switch that number four on, then that allows you to go into the main menu setting and do all that stuff. So you can go through the manual and you can go through all that stuff. The manual that comes with these things, you can pretty much turf them. I'm not even gonna show them on here because it's a waste of time. We have a version for the old board and we're currently working on one for the new board. It'll be ready within a couple of weeks. Um, but that there will walk you through uh, how to go through the settings, how to get into the menu, how to work with this board itself and program all the games and do all that stuff. So if your board's working and everything's fine and you wanna get into it, just download our PDF and it'll be good to go. Now, if you're having troubles with your board, the first thing I would do is check your connections. This little four pin prong connection that's here, this pin should never be connected on anything other than a 2100 board. So if you've got a 2019, a 3016, a 3045, a 1384, I think a 1385, uh, that type of a thing, do not connect it, fold it up, put it up on top there, it's not gonna matter. You just need the small part of your Morlix connector and you need to connect it to a power supply. Um, that power supply should be a minimum of about 300 to 350 watts. 
maximum, no more than about five, 550. You could use a 700, but it's a little bit overkill and you break the bank getting it for no reason. Um, but if you go anything lower than 250 on these, you might not get video and that type of a thing. If that's the case, then obviously upgrade your, your power supply, try it, and all of a sudden, oh, miraculously it works, it's great. Even though for a lower power supply, this will all turn on, the lights will all work, everything looks like it's working, you're just getting no video. So that would be the case for that. Um, troubleshooting everything else, like if you boot it up and you're just getting a blue screen or you get a BIOS, that type of a thing, that's going to tell you that your IDE cable from your IDE drive to the actual motherboard is loose or not connected somehow. So you want to make sure you seat that, rock it a little bit, push it in, give it a little bit of pressure. Don't reef on these things because you don't want to break it or do anything that way. And then make sure that all the little connectors that are coming from the bottom of the motherboard go up and that go up to the top board, which is your JAMA board. You want to make sure that that's all connected and seated properly. Pretty much electronics 101, but just make sure you go over it, check it, make sure all that stuff is connected properly. Um, when that's all said and done, if you fire it up and it's still not booting up for you, um, then basically um, you could have a corrupt hard drive. So if that hard drive itself, it's either going to black screen and give you nothing, or it'll blue screen and give you like the blue screen of death error. Um, that typically happens from you turning it off without using the shutdown. Now some of them don't have the shutdown, the 1385, I think the 3500, they don't have a shutdown actual like option in the game menu so right when you go to all games at the top it should say shut down if it doesn't say it there then you don't have it um, if you don't have it and you just have to turn it off these things are notorious notorious that what happens is, is that it'll delete or corrupt the dll files so for your boot up and stuff so when it does that um, basically in the end uh, it just won't boot up over time so we do sell um, refurbished drives with the game list that you want on it we can burn it on there for you and uh, mail it to you and stuff like that should be available on our website if it's not and you don't see it there for the game list that you have uh, feel free to email us or contact us and see if we can uh, get that list for you because i pretty much have all the lists um, the other cool thing except for the 2100 is that those lists are usually interchangeable so if you had a 1384 if it's a de like a decent version of it for your motherboard and stuff then um, we could actually you know burn the 2019 for you and you put it on there and it'll work and run properly and everything's all good um, other problems that you might have you might boot up and everything's all good and you get into the menu and you can sometimes you can select through to a game sometimes you can't it just freezes up and locks up on you so what that problem is is this here so basically you're heat sink fan and uh, the aluminum cooling unit that goes over top of your CPU. Uh, it's clamped down by some metal clamps that you can see here. Um, this one here only has one. I've fixed it. I've done the repair so that you can see what it is. What happens is, is that the bottom little um, kind of, I guess, um, foundation piece that, that holds that clamp down, what it happens is it either dries out over time because it's kind of a cheap setup um, or it gets knocked around, you moved your machine, all of a sudden it's not working, that's a big hint of what's wrong with this here, is that that clamp um, clip breaks off the plastic and then the clamp can't, can't clamp down anymore. So basically this heat sink fan can wiggle around, can't right now because I've done it, so I fixed it. But basically all we did, nice cheap hack, is um, we just put a little zip tie on there, doubled up some zip ties, took the top board off, went down, strapped it, right to the CPU on the board to give it some pressure and hold it on there, turn it on, voila, she works fine now and everything's all good to go, can't complain, everybody's happy. Um, that would be one of the major kind of like physical uh, issues that'll happen with these boards. Everything else isn't necessarily physical, you may not be able to tell. Um, so the other problem that you might have is that you can go in to your menu, get it all set up, get into your game, everything's working perfectly, but for whatever reason you can't coin in. It just, no matter what you do, you've checked the connections, you've done all that stuff, you troubleshoot and the living hell out of this thing, and it's all working, everything's good, but your coin doesn't work. What that's telling you, or telling me uh, over the years, what happens is, is you've left your machine on for way too long, and or it got caught in an electrical storm, I can't really attest to one of those two, but um, basically what happens is if you leave it on for too long, like six, seven days straight or two weeks or something like that, and then you finally turn it off, you forgot to turn it off to whatever. What happens is, is this little chip here overheats and it fries. 
And that chip there controls one of the like the coin mechanism on the on the actual top piece of this JAMA board. So once that chip goes, that's it. To replace this is so much time, effort, money, everything that it's not even worth it. We brought a couple chips of these in. I still have them if you want to contact me. I still think I have two or three of them. Uh, you can go ahead and try to solder that on and fix it, but it's almost impossible to do by hand. It'd take you forever, which is fine, I guess. Uh, but in the end, what you want to do is replace this top board if you can find it. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, these boards, everything about them is pretty much obsolete or going to be very soon. They're going to be almost impossible to find. These top boards are the ones that go first. The reasons being for this to go um, is because of overheating, uh, leaving it on for too long, that type of a thing. Uh, like I said, with the IDE drive, that one's a quick fix. We can just do whatever there and then it's fine. Um, other than that, the only other thing that you can get that I see that's happened with these things that that you can troubleshoot through, but it's the same problem as the last one where you're kind of uh, stuck with a bad board that you have to replace, is if on these pins here for your JAMA board, there's a little kind of keyed slot there. Now, if you get a basic generic harness or almost any JAMA harness, they don't necessarily have this key slot in the harness so that it'll only fit one way. This small side is your power side. So you got ground 12 volt, 5 volt type thing or 5 volt, 12 volt. I don't have the harness right in front of me. Um, and then these are all your action buttons and connections. So this keyed spot, that's where the power has to go. If you put the harness upside down and put the power on the wrong side, you burn out all these little chips here and you will not, well, you, sometimes you can see where it's actually burnt, but it happens so fast and just pops the little bit inside of that chip that that top board is pretty much toast if you've done it. Sometimes if you're lucky and you catch yourself fast enough, it won't, uh, it won't affect it to a point where it'll like wreck it and it won't work. But just even doing it once would probably affect the longevity lifespan of this board uh, to half by doing it that way if you could get it to actually work again after that. Um, you, so you wanna make very clear to do that. I have a video on this specific type board that shows you how to do it and I think the 2100 as well and it shows actual like me hooking up all the all the wiring and stuff for power and stuff how to power these boards um, yeah I just wanted to go over the troubleshooting tips of them because we get a lot of calls about the old boards so um, yeah if you can uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions or anything else about these then feel free to uh, kind of contact us at the bottom of this video and or directly at our website at retroactivearcade.ca. Um, you can contact us on Facebook and stuff as well. Hopefully I helped in any sort of way whatsoever, but if you have any questions that I haven't covered, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.